I'm incredibly hopeful about what's going to happen in type 1 diabetes because we are finally getting to the point of reprogramming the immune system. UCSF, with myself, have been uh, an important part of various clinical research networks to try and you know, solve the problem of type 1 diabetes. The top of that uh, number of agents is, is really the, the responses to teplizumab. The results of that trial were very dramatic in delaying the progression to type 1. And we have conducted a number of other prevention trials over the past few decades. This is the first one that's worked. The approval of anti-CD3, I think, would be a game changer for the field of type 1 diabetes. I first heard about the trial through my endocrinologist. Given the fact that my diabetes was in its honeymoon stage, it made me like a perfect candidate. My older brother was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes around the same age as me. His experience was a lot more severe than mine made me realize and understand how the study has impacted my diabetes as a whole. and It helped me manage my diabetes in a way that my brother never had a chance to. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1966. I was just about uh, 18 months old, and I did have a number of uh, low blood sugar events during the night um, yeah, where I'd wake up in the hospital and no memory of what happened, but I knew it was serious. In my late 30s, um, I knew something had to change and we started looking into more advanced or aggressive therapies. And then we started uh, investigating a whole pancreas transplant, which I ended up receiving in October 2010. It's literally saved my life. Type 1 diabetes results from immune destruction of a single cell type, and that's the insulin-producing beta cell. Just with the loss of that one simple cell type, it's a very difficult chronic illness to manage. So the UCSF Diabetes Center has now uh, been around for about 22 years. I think that there really have been two big components uh, to our contribution to type 1 diabetes. One uh, is the immune system problem. So Dr. Bluestone's lab uh, has championed trying to reprogram the immune system in a way that we can get the immune system not to attack the insulin producing cells, but leave the good parts of the immune system behind. A couple of key components that his lab has contributed to the field have been uh, the development of a drug called anti-CD3, uh, which is now on the cusp of FDA approval. So it's been a long journey in developing teplizumab, starting some 36, 37 years ago at this point. Our first real major publication was in 2002 uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine, where we showed that we could take patients who had just developed type 1 diabetes and try to prevent or reverse the disease before all the islets were destroyed. And so that was really the first demonstration that teplizumab could really slow down, if not reverse the disease in, in many of these patients. Over the years, we've had a number of patients and families that have come through to receive this experimental medication here. There's just been a lot of excitement with each of these efforts, the way that it's altered their natural course of diabetes over time. And then another area that's rapidly evolving, but still in the development stage, is a really interesting population of T cells called regulatory T cells. And Jeff's lab and also my colleague, Kitsei Tong, uh, have championed bringing that to the forefront of uh, clinical therapy. We have already uh, performed the phase one clinical trial of a generation one regulatory T cells. My lab is working on the next generation regulatory T cells to improve their potency and safety. And if you want to get into a mode where you really want to move the needle in a challenging disease, you got to take chances, you got to take risk, you got to think big. Uh, and this is where the philanthropy really can make a huge difference. So at UCSF, we have a collaborative team. We've been working together for more than five years. So this Gordon gift allowed us to now continue our work and tackle all these problems at once and by putting all our expertise together. Mike and I choose to give to UCSF because we know our gift will be wisely managed. We have full confidence in the Diabetes Center, and we certainly hope that this will also inspire others to give. For us to, to be able to support these researchers and give them multi-year support, where they're not having every year to go out and fundraise and not sure where their next dollar is going to come from, we felt that would be a great way to drive a cure for this disease.
and the Diabetes Center has been a home for some of the most important aspects of type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes from the discovery of insulin to the discovery of beta cells to discoveries having to do with cell therapy. It's been a real privilege to be a part of this organization. The problem in type 1 diabetes is the immune system making a mistake. There are many other diseases where the exact same thing happens but a different organ gets attacked. All of those diseases, the, the switch that's being controlled is similar to the switch that's in type 1 diabetes. So what's discovered in type 1 diabetes can be things that can be applied to these other devastating autoimmune diseases. Again, it's the opening the door, getting people to change their thinking um, that I think is going to be part of the revolution here.